This presentation is brought to you by the Colorado Neurological Institute Movement Disorder Center. Parkinson's disease research is advancing remarkably quickly. This video will review new advances in the area of diagnosis, progression, and cause of Parkinson's disease. One specific area of advancement is the discovery of new genes which cause familial Parkinson's disease. In fact, one new gene is being discovered approximately every three to six months. As we better understand how these genes affect cellular function, we may be able to better understand the cause of Parkinson's disease even in those patients who don't have familial Parkinson's disease. We are beginning to better understand how the pathology of Parkinson's disease spreads from one area of the brain to another. With this understanding, we may be able to better correlate how symptoms progress as the disease progresses. Mutations in a large number of genes have been found to cause familial Parkinson's disease, in which multiple family members are affected. However, if one puts together all of these different identified genetic causes, this accounts for less than 10% of patients with Parkinson's disease. The vast majority of patients do not have a mutation in any of the yet identified genes. This table shows a partial list of genes known to cause familial Parkinson's disease. The first three genes, Parkin, PINK1, and DJ1, cause autosomal recessive Parkinson's disease. This means that one abnormal gene must be inherited from each parent in order for the individual to develop Parkinson's disease. Such affected individuals usually develop Parkinson's disease at a younger age and have a slow progression over time. Mutations in the alpha-synuclein gene were the first genetic causes of familial Parkinson's disease to be found. Such families have autosomal dominant Parkinson's disease, in which each child of an affected parent has a 50% chance of inheriting the mutation and thus developing the disease. Such affected patients typically have a slightly younger age of onset than patients with run-of-the-mill Parkinson's disease and have a higher incidence of dementia. LRRK2 mutations are the most common genetic cause of Parkinson's disease. Approximately 1-2% to of patients in the United States who have Parkinson's disease have a mutation in this gene. In certain populations, such as in North African Arabs and Ashkenazi Jews, 30-40% to of patients with Parkinson's disease have mutations in this gene. This gene causes autosomal dominant Parkinson's disease. It is hoped that identifying the different genes that cause familial Parkinson's disease will allow us to better understand causes of Parkinson's disease at a cellular level. This understanding may allow us to develop better therapies specifically designed to target these defects. Lewy bodies are intracellular protein inclusions which are composed predominantly of alpha-synuclein. These abnormal accumulations of alpha-synuclein may be a key component of the cell death process in Parkinson's disease. This provides an important link between the genetics of familial Parkinson's disease and the pathology of the disease. Generally, all patients with Parkinson's disease are found to have these abnormal protein inclusions in the brain on autopsy. In the process of normal cellular function, proteins are broken down or degraded after they are used through a complex system. Abnormalities in these proteins or in the protein degradation system may lead to an accumulation of toxic waste proteins within the cell that impair cellular function. This eventually results in cellular energy failure, finally resulting in cell death in Parkinson's disease. This diagram summarizes many of the different factors which eventually lead to cell death. Environmental factors or toxic exposures may impair energy metabolism. Genetic abnormalities and age-related decline in cellular function results in increased susceptibility to Parkinson's disease as well. Accumulation of abnormal proteins results in cellular dysfunction. Eventually, cellular energy failure results in cell death, which finally results in the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. This animation depicts the spread of abnormal proteins and cell death in Parkinson's disease from the lower brain stem to the upper brain stem and finally to the cortical or surface areas of the brain. This pattern of spread is seen in the vast majority 
but not all patients with Parkinson's disease, and probably accounts for the rather predictable pattern of progression that occurs clinically in patients. There is increasing evidence that abnormal protein conformation, or an abnormal three-dimensional structure of certain proteins, results in toxicity of cells in Parkinson's disease. There is especially evidence that alpha-synuclein protein misfolds. Misfolded alpha-synuclein then interacts with normal alpha-synucleins found within the cells, as shown on the left side of the diagram. Here normal proteins are represented by green structures and abnormal proteins as red. This interaction seems to induce the normally conformed alpha-synuclein molecule to take up the abnormal conformation as shown on the right side of the diagram. This adversely affects cell function. These abnormally conformed molecules can spread from one cell to another via the normal connections of neurons. This pattern of spread seems to fit the pattern of spread seen pathologically in patients with Parkinson's disease. This concept is referred to as protein templating. Fetal transplant studies provide evidence for this model. Fetal neurons transplanted into patients with Parkinson's disease have been found to develop Lewy bodies after many years. This is likely due to the spread of abnormal proteins from the host with Parkinson's disease to the grafted fetal neurons. Animal models of Parkinson's disease have now been developed in which abnormal alpha-synuclein proteins injected into mice spread from cell to cell and result in cell loss and symptoms resembling Parkinson's disease. There is also evidence that abnormal proteins may spread in this way in other neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease. There is excitement in the scientific community that better understanding this process of progression in Parkinson's disease may lead to therapeutics that target the abnormal alpha-synuclein proteins. This diagram depicts the progression of Parkinson's disease from the pre-symptomatic phase through the non-motor phase and finally motor phase of Parkinson's disease. There is a long time course from the initiation of cell loss in Parkinson's disease before motor symptoms finally begin. At least 50% of the dopamine producing cells of the substantia nigra have degenerated by the time of diagnosis. It may be possible to identify patients in the pre-symptomatic or non-motor phase. The PARS, or Parkinson's at Risk Study, is an NIH-sponsored initiative in which thousands of individuals who are relatives of patients with Parkinson's disease are screened for the presence of constipation, depression, REM sleep behavior disorder, and impaired smell. Olfactory dysfunction occurs in up to 90% of patients with Parkinson's disease and may predate motor symptoms by at least four years. Constipation occurs in 60 to 80 percent of patients with Parkinson's disease and may predate motor symptoms by 10 years. REM behavior disorder may occur up to 20 years before the development of motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. In the PARS study, relatives of patients with Parkinson's disease who have several of these symptoms then undergo dopamine transporter scanning. This study may allow the development of a cohort of large numbers of individuals then who have abnormal dopamine transporter scans but have no motor features of Parkinson's disease. It is possible that new medications that may modify or slow the progression of early Parkinson's disease could then be tested in this group of individuals. There are many other studies trying to improve the diagnosis of early Parkinson's disease as well as to identify markers of disease progression. The PPMI study is one such international study aimed at discovering such biomarkers. By developing a new, more precise diagnostic test, patients may be diagnosed earlier and more reliably, and this may allow the development of better targeted therapies. Preliminary results from the PPMI study show that abnormal alpha-synuclein and tau proteins in the spinal fluid may be seen in patients with Parkinson's disease. As a result, there is a strong effort to examine living patients for abnormal alpha-synuclein in the colon, salivary glands, and even the skin. Such relatively non-invasive biopsies could then be potentially used for the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. As we have reviewed in this video, significant new biomarkers are being discovered that 
should be helpful in allowing earlier diagnosis and monitoring the progression of Parkinson's disease in a definitive way. High strength research MRI scanners may soon allow us to image the pathology of Parkinson's disease directly. Our understanding of the long premotor phase in Parkinson's disease should allow earlier diagnosis. Lastly, as we better understand the mechanisms of cell death, we should be able to develop targeted therapies to slow the progression of Parkinson's disease. To learn more about new research in Parkinson's disease, please visit our website.